it's raining outside, the Lord know what we need. If you ride by these lakes and ponds, we say real low. Some of them about dried up, and uh, He giving us this rain. That's a beautiful thing. Um, before I get started, I'd like to start off with some good news. I know uh, about a month ago, I told y'all my brother-in-law had a um, aneurysm in his head, and uh, he went to the doctor, and he was in there for about a month. Um, last week. With the help of the Lord, he got to go home. Don't don't too many people make it back from that. My sister was like, um, you know, they spent a whole lot of money down there going to the, um, the hotels and all that kind of stuff. She was like, we ain't going to be able to do too much for Christmas. I'm like, she don't need to. The Lord has blessed you already. You got your Christmas. You know, that's. I went and saw him the other day and healed his old self. Um, I don't know about the day because they play. Uh, he a cowboy fan. I'm an Eagle fan, and uh, you know <laughs> we're probably gonna do it to him today, but you know. But other than that, he's doing great. And thank y'all for prayer. Um, through all this, I I I've been me from my grandma from a long time ago. So prayer changes things. And uh, with everybody praying and and everything going through, I I know the Lord brought him through it. So I say thank y'all. Um, storm we had, I, I looked at the news last night, and it went through Tennessee, and a tornado hit, and this lady was on there, and she was talking about everything is gone, I don't have anything, I mean, she was, I mean, it was, I was like, Lord, what can, all you can do is pray for that person. He didn't bring no storm through here, but um, he woke us up this morning, he woke us up this morning with health and strength. And all for that, we can say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My uh, youngest son came home last night uh, from college. <laughs> thank you, Lord. We here in this beautiful sanctuary. It's the Lord's house, but we here. We say thank you, Lord, for bringing us here. Yeah. Um, we don't have a actual pastor yet, but we have people that's reading this church, that's giving the word. And for that, we say thank you. So as I bow my head, pray with me so that uh, we continue to go through this Christmas season with the love of God. I, I, I read the scriptures this morning, and it, it kind of touched me because I think about his steadfast love and his mercy and his grace, and that's what brings us through. And, and for all that, we should always say thank you when we wake up in the morning every day. Now we know prayer changes things. Lord, we want to thank you once again for bringing us through. Thank you for bringing us through a week. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. Thank you for bringing us to your house one more time, Lord. Lord, we pray that as we go through this Christmas season, that you continue to give us the love that you gave us, that we can spread it to everybody. Knowing that it ain't about the presents, it ain't about the gifts. It's about the love. It ain't about the food. It's about the just being with each other, Lord. Continue to bless this church. Continue to bless the, the leaders, the ones that bring the word, the ones that sing your songs. Lord, for all that, we want to say thank you, Lord. Then, Lord, we want you to take over this service. Have it run as you have it run, Lord, so that we may leave from here knowing that you are our Lord and Savior. And all we do all things through you, Lord. So this is my prayer. I pray in your son Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Union. Let's try that again. Good morning, Union. Come on and put your hands together. The song says, Jesus, what a wonderful child. We invite you to stand with us if you like. But he said, God is good. However you celebrate God, we want to do it on today.
Y'all know it. Come on, help us sing it. Here we go. Jesus. 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 Oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus. Jesus. So holy, meek and mild. New life. New life. New hope. To all he brings, listen to the angels sing, glory, glory, glory to the new born King. Jesus, here we go. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so holy. Thanksgiving in the house of God on this day, regardless of the weather, but that's part of the nature in which we live in, with rain and other things happen as we go along. But we know God is good, isn't he? Yeah. he yes, he is good. He does things, uh, uh, blesses us in many ways mm -hmm. as we begin to look at and praise him and give him the benefit as to what and where we are and what we do, that we can give him all the credit. Because if it had not been for God himself, we would not be where we are. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So at this time, I'm going to have the uh, uh, scripture reading. I'll be reading the scripture reading. Some from Psalms 103, 1 through 5. And it reads as follows. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgive all your iniquity. Who heal all your disease. Who redeem your life from the pit who crowned you 
with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfied you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Just thank you, Jesus, for this word. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our uh, Advent, which will be done by Reverend Patricia Miles at this time. Hmm? I will. knowing that we are not perfect, that we all make mistakes and do bad things. Only Jesus got obeyed God fully. Jesus helps us live as God wants us to live. Jesus gives us peace. Thank you. For us, okay, for to us, <laughs> a child is born, to us a son is given, and the, gov and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of, of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and right righteousness. And from that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Eternal God, we thank you that through all the years you have given peace to your people. Help us to have your peace in our lives. We pray that in the Advent season we may, by what we do, show your presence to the sick, to the hungry, and to the lonely, so that they too may have peace. Amen. Yeah, um, I um, apologize for my outburst just a few minutes ago, but we got a, 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 a set program here we're trying to go by, so we will, that's in, that's in order, you know, birthdays and everything is in order as we, as we move forward. So now we will bless the offering. Dear God in heaven, we thank you as we have come this way to share that which is you have given us. We thank you, O oh Lord, for each and every one that's in the building today, O oh God. Come to know, O oh God, that you have made a way for them. And that they come to share a portion of that which you have given them. We pray, O oh God, that they be used for the ability of kingdom here in this church and otherwise for what is being used for, God. And we say thank you. 
Thank you for each and every one. Mm -hmm. And those who give and those who have begun to give. Dear Lord, we ask this in the name of this Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 So we're uh, looking at our birthdays. Mm -hmm. And we have Catherine Doherty. Is she in the house this morning? And we have Christy Miles. And we have Jasmine Miles. Okay, we want to express ourselves as we go along to. We want to not forget the sick and the shut-in that we know of our parishioners here in this church. And others that you may come in contact with that you know that are ailing now as we see that. We want to actually just uh, do whatever you can. Pray for them, oh God, in all that we do. Because prayer changes things. And we look to God for all of what he is. And that what he does for each and every one of us. And we all need prayer at times. So at this time, we will have another song. When the next voice you will hear will be that of the speaker.
Amen, somebody. We worship Emmanuel on today. Thank God for you, 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 and you. Thank God for those who are joining us in Facebook land. God bless the musicians. God bless the choir that's singing so beautifully. We do give honor to all the leadership of, of uh, Union Chapel, uh, the deacons and the trustees. God bless everybody under the sound of my voice on today this is family and friends day uh and we're drawing closer to the end of 2023 isn't that something about two or three more sundays and 2023 is gone not trying to rush it but christmas is almost here that is something to me you have heard in your presence today the reading of the scripture and for a few moments, I want to speak with you on the topic, when God blesses your soul. When God blesses your soul. I want to say thank you, my sister and my nephew and his family, for being here on today. God bless you all. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you even right now for the word that you have given. We ask even now that... It will do what it is intended to do. We know that you said that your word would go out and not return to you void. And we thank you for that. We ask in the name of Jesus that you allow your Holy Spirit to have its way today that we may be encouraged, God. We need you. We love you. We can't do anything without you. We give it all to you in this worship experience. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Like I said, I don't expect to be before you very long but I do want to speak with you on the topic when God blesses your soul beloved of God time and circumstances often bring about opportunities for us to reflect on both the good and the bad of our life experiences in addition there are occasions in all of our lives that by chance cause us to evaluate our relationships. As a result, many times we may feel it necessary to categorize our re re uh, relatives, friends, and other relations by the value of support they give us during our times of need. Let me see if I can make this live for you. If Pookie and them <laughs> only call when they need something, come on here somebody, if they try to suck up to us when they think we got it going on, then disappear when all the resources are gone, we probably know not to put them in our mental Rolodex of people to call during an emergency. You know how it is when we are constantly pouring out of ourselves 90 to 100% in a relationship only to receive about 10% or less in return from our so-called friends. Am I telling the truth about it? Surely I am not alone, uh, and I'm not the only one here today who has ever been involved in a lopsided, unbalanced, or unhealthy relationship with people who show little to no concern about our well-being or whether our needs continually go unmet. 
uh, uh, maybe you know something about giving your all, only to be left feeling empty and drained when it's all said and done. And that's real. That's real. As if it were not enough to cope with, though, it may take us a while to come to terms with the truthfulness of the matter. Oh, how heart-wrenching to admit we have become a victim of one of humanity's greatest disappointments, expressing love to someone who does not appear to love us back. Lord have mercy. My friends, if we rely too much on some tiny people to make us feel good, we will never fully experience happiness, and our life will greatly suffer from a lack of fulfillment. So then, when we think about it, we may find we depend on the inconsistency in the conditional love of human beings to do for us only what God can do. We often put our trust in, in God. We often put our trust in people who will only go so far on our behalf, yet find it difficult to trust in God who made the ultimate sacrifice for us through Jesus Christ. Let us face the fact. Only God will consistently go through thick and thin with us when we find ourselves in unpleasant situation. Is that true? When we think about it further, we understand God looks past all of our faults to see our need. God always meets our need when people become fickle, when, when they turn and run away at the first sign of trouble. The songwriter said, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus because he's my friend. I wonder if anyone would declare today, you find a mighty good friend in Jesus. So during those spontaneous times of reflecting about life, in general, God periodically reveals or uncovers the true essence of human nature to us so we will know without a shadow of a doubt where our help comes from. I am certain we can agree today we are often inspired and revived when we have, by way of the, the divine providence of God, triumphantly overcome the challenges of adversity, infirmity, and oppression. Those experiences many of us can recall when the odds were stacked up against us, when our back was against the wall. But God, God stepped in right on time, every time. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know that the God I serve is both faithful and on time. Know this, when all else fails, God's word will never fall short of fulfilling every promise when we cannot count on anyone else to follow through. We can always depend on God. Now, my mother used to sing a song, I Can Depend on God. Yes, I can. Through the storm, y'all know how it goes, through the rain, through heartache, and through the pain, I can depend on God. There were many times mama depended on God when humankind just could not get it done. Later, I would understand why mama always had a song in, uh, in her heart. Mama would sing, God is good all the time. Then get her little hot bone, uh, and because uh, nobody could tell it, like mama could, just how good God had been to her. God was with mama when she took her last breath, and God was good to her from the time of her birth until that time. She was always ready to give testimony of how good God had been to her because no one could tell it like she could. Think on this. In Isaiah 55, 11, this word of the Lord came to Isaiah. My word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Yes, we can depend on God because God is not like human beings who lie. Don't folks lie. But God cannot lie, and I'm glad about that today. 
Let us consider God's track record for a moment. Has God said anything that God has not done? Or has God not made good on everything God has spoken? Well, then whose report will you believe? People who turn their love on and off like a faucet or a faithful and loving God who always comes through for us. I tell you the truth, I put my faith and my trust in God because God provides for my every need. God has been better to me than I've been to myself. Has God been good to you? Has God turned your midnights into days? Made ways out of no way. Somebody ought to praise God right there. Because if it had not been for the Lord on your side, how many people say, I don't know where I would be? Well, as we look back at the text, I now understand why we find a jubilant and grateful psalmist, one who uses his own recollection to compel all who read this hymn of praise to reflect on thoughts about the love and compassion of the Most High God. Like many of the other psalms, the writer ignites an atmosphere of praise due to the marvelous acts of a praiseworthy God. He seems to write in such a way that those who read and hear it will instantly re relate to the point he tries to convey. For this reason, I believe the psalmist wants to draw the hearer's attention to some experiences common to all of humanity. You know about those days when you have to encourage yourself. Am I by myself today? When it seems like no one understands, when we have no alternative other than to look to the hills from whence we receive our help. Yes, in the first five verses of this psalm, his writing demonstrates a significance of remembering moments when God manifests divine power to heal us, to deliver us, and to set us free. In the book, How to Read the Psalms, Trimper Longman III, titled Chapter 5, The Psalms, Mirror of the Soul. In Chapter 5, Longman states, The Psalter, the book of Psalms, like a uh, hymnal or a hymn book, speaks to the whole person with these three characteristics. The Psalms inform our intellect. The Psalms arouse our emotions. The Psalms direct our wills. In other words, Loman states, what we read in the book of Psalms typically teaches us something about ourselves and our relationship to God. We encounter God in the Psalms as we are grounded in our faith, or it expresses a covenant faith in God as a model for its readers. The Psalms also point us in the right direction of right behaviors approved or blessed by God. Now, an intriguing thought about this passage in Psalm 103 arises in my mind from how the psalmist at first commands his inner being to praise God. He says, self, Brother Brown used to say, self said, huh? <laughs> praise the Lord. As if he did not respond in the right manner, he says again, self, praise the Lord. Amen. Then the psalmist asks, and do not forget all of his benefits. This is remarkable because the extra information about God's goodness shakes his soul. Here he commands his inner being to wake up and take notice. Get up, enter me, and do what you were created to do. For it is written in Psalms, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Now, this is the second Sunday in Advent where we have an expectation of Jesus Christ coming in the flesh. And I am reminded of a story in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. Very familiar. You know how the story goes how Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John the Baptist. In Luke, the first chapter, verse 41 and 42, it states, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb. Is that what it said? And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And verse 42, 
exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are ye among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. In verse 45, Elizabeth states, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Verse 46 begins with Mary's song, or the Magnificat, as some call it. It states, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Mary states in verse 49, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Here, let's take inventory. When God impregnates you with a vision, come on here somebody, with hope you cannot see with your natural vision, it does something on the inside. Am I right about it? Jeremiah said the word of God is like fire. Shut up in my bones. At times you would not be able to contain the praise because as clarity comes, power ignites up on the inside. The more the vision comes into fruition, am I telling the truth? The stronger the praise becomes. When God blesses your soul, your, your inner being, it may not make sense to anybody, guess what, but you. No one may know what you and God talk about in your secret closet. That praise is beyond comprehension. It must be done. The praise wants to get out and connect with another praise. David stated in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord. Come on here, somebody. At all times, good God Almighty, God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. My friends, it should not take either one of us very long to go back into the archives of our memory to find occasions when we knew it was nobody but God who brought us through the fire, through the storm, and through the rain. For this reason, we don't need anybody to prime and or pump us up when we come to church. Am I telling the truth about it? In Psalm 122 and 1, the psalmist declares, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, this is a song the worshipers sang as they gathered together while on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. I wonder if there are any worshipers in the sanctuary this morning who were overjoyed about coming to Union Chapel to give our God a hallelujah praise. I wonder if about 10 of you are glad to be here in the service just one more time. We are above ground and not six feet under it. Somebody ought to be glad about that today. Now, Although in verses 20 through 22, the psalmist charges all of creation to show gratitude to God, his right now praise concerns deeds he has seen or heard of God performing in his own lifetime. So in verses uh, 3 through 19, the psalmist unfolds that which his psyche has unveiled for him. Those occasions recalled to his remembrance at this specific moment. Therefore, he writes in verse 3 through 5, Remember, God forgives not some, but all of your sins. Oh, somebody ought to get excited about that. Remember, God heals not one, but all of your diseases. Remember, God redeems you. God's love covers a multitude of sins. Remember, God satisfies your desires with good things so your youth is renewed like the eagles. 
Yes, these are but a few benefits that come with service to God. These are things that God's people can expect when we need divine interruption in the devil's plans. A blessed hope, God takes care of God's own. A hope that strengthens us and enables us to hold on to God's unchanging hand until we have reached a point in our journey when we can look back over our life and see where God has brought us from. Now, this, friends of God, is why I'm inclined to agree with the psalmist where he writes, do not forget all the benefits of the Lord. How can we forget such great deeds the Lord has done? Do you remember how your so-called friends and loved ones turned their back on you, but God was right there to comfort you every night as your tears soak your pillows. Then by and by, it finally dawned on you. People may come and people may go, but God would never leave nor forsake you. What about the many times you needed money to pay your bills? Come on here, somebody. And to put gas in your car. Did not the Lord make a way out of no way? Sick all in your body. Uh, doctors did all they could do. Then we had a little time talk with our God, uh, told God all about our troubles, uh, didn't God make it all right, uh, my God, I never shall forget uh, everything that you have done for me, uh, I tell you, my friends, it amazes me uh, how the psalmist makes reference to his innermost being when he writes about praising the Lord. Uh, he makes a connection uh, between praising the Lord uh, and remembering the good deeds of the Lord. Uh, this lets me know his praise was for real. Uh, and when our praise is for real, we can give God the glory when we're on the mountaintop. Uh, and then again, when we're down, 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 uh, down in the valley, uh, the truth is a real worshiper has learned to rejoice in times of trouble uh, because we know that troubles don't last uh, always. Uh, a true worshiper knows if God doesn't do anything else for us. Uh, God's love has done more than enough. Uh, well, all I'm trying to let you know uh, is when I think of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that he's done for me, uh, my soul cries out, uh, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Uh, I rejoice in the Lord because I know uh, my God can do uh, exceedingly abundant above all I can think or ask according to the power of the Lord within me. Uh, so when I think about just how good the Lord has been down through the years, something on the inside, good God Almighty, stirs up, ha! Thank you, God, uh, even when trouble is all around me. Uh, when I remember the many times God made a way out of no way, I find strength to run on and see just what the end is going to be. Uh, you see, it is written, those who wait on the Lord uh, shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up with wings of an eagle. Uh, they shall run and not grow weary. Uh, they shall walk and not faint. Uh, when I remember how good the Lord has been, I believe I can fly like an eagle. Now, I used to think, that I could not go on, and life was nothing but an awful song. But now I know the meaning of God's love, so I'm leaning on God's everlasting arms. If by faith I can see it, then my God, my God can do it. If I can just believe it, there's nothing that my God cannot do. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. When I think about God's love every night and day, I can spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar. I see myself running through an open door. I believe I can fly. And the reason why is because I remember what God's love has done for me. God bless you. God bless you.
just want to give you some words of encouragement today as we draw to the end of 2023 that you will have a renewed way of believing that God is working in your life. Is that all right? That God would do some new things in your life. I believe God can do it. And I believe God is doing it even right now. We got some things that we're looking forward to as a church body. And God is going to do it. I trust him. Do you trust and believe? God's going to do it. It won't be nothing that good that we've done. But it will be the way God manifests God's will in our lives and as a church body. We do thank God for that. We're going to ask even right now that we'll have the choir to give us a selection. Then we'll have a prayer of invitation, if you would, and bless the food benediction. Reverend Grace, God bless you. Friend of mine. of mine, when storm clouds come, he will always be there. Be Praise the Lord. Let's give our preacher a hand. Praise the Lord. All of us preachers know what it means to study and to labor before the Lord for, us, for a message, the right message and an on-time message. I want to give honor to everyone in, in the church, everyone in the congregation. Give honor to these preachers, amen. amen. Reverend Milton, amen. Let's give him a hand. Reverend Miles, let's give her a hand, please. Amen. And Reverend Van is our preacher for the hour. And Reverend Miles, amen. 
Are there any more preachers in the congregation? Even those people who undercover preachers, amen? (laughs) We thank God for all of you. Thank God for the trustees and the deacons who continue to work and to labor before the Lord for for the purpose of doing things. My heart may be a little bit heavy, um, not heavy, but delightful yet heavy. I don't know what the next few weeks are going to take me, but I always remember that I love you, Union Chapel. I've been asked to do something, and I've agreed to it, but know that I love you. Amen. Just keep me in your prayers. Are there any more prayers and and, uh, needs? We're going to lift up Miss Aletha Browning, Miss Ruth Harris, Miss Shirley Penix, Miss Ava Parker, Miss Celestine Leaf, Miss Teresa Graves. Are there any more people that we need to lift up at this time? Oh, okay. Okay. And thank God for those people who have come back. Let's give them a hand after being sick. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Elon is one of our uh, United Church of Christ uh, schools. Affiliated, amen. amen. Congratulations. <laughs> We're proud, but let's give another hand. <laughs> we thank God for our younger people who continue to come back even after they've graduated. Let's give them a hand. Yes. Let's give our search committee a hand, please. Yes. Amen. amen. God is good. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear God, our heart writes you a letter. And it says, it's me again. And God, I'm standing in the need of prayer. Not only me, God, but all of those people who are under the sound of my voice. All of those people who are in war-torn countries. All of those people who have no place to live because of storms. Those people who've lost loved ones, who right now are burying their loved ones, who are hungry. Those people, God, who were rich to begin with, and then war came and destroyed everything that they had, God. Oh, God, we go out in our souls and our hearts for all people who are in need. We're in need too, God, but we just don't realize it sometimes. We're in need, as the preacher said, of more love and caring and understanding and being a friend to others. And God, we're in need of your direction. We as ministers are in need of your direction. As people of God in this congregation, Christians, we're in need of your direction. We're in some serious times, God. The nation is in a serious condition. The world is in a serious condition. But God, we know that you're still on the throne. And we know, God, that you can do anything but fail. And then I hear those voices say, God, where are you when my home is torn up? Where are you, God, when I have no money in the bank? God said, have faith. Still have faith. Still have hope. Still have peace because I am the peace. And I give you peace. God is our peace. And we are the peacemakers that God has given to all of those who are Christians. God, help us to continue to have peace in the world. That is what is needed right now, God. We need peace and love. God, give us peace. Not at the cost of people dying. Not at the cost of people losing everything, God. But God, the peace that only you can give us that surpasses all understanding. We don't understand how the peace is going to come, God. 
But with you, God, we know that it's coming. Day by day, God, we live one moment at a time. And we know, God, that you're in each one of those moments. We love you so much, God. And we here and online, bless those people who are online, God. The people who work in this church, from the ushers all the way up to the choir, God. Thank you, God, for the voices that sing today. Yes. Bless their homes. Bless all of us, God. Help us to live in peace with one another. Because the enemy is not the human flesh, not the human document. The enemy is the devil. Help us not to be drawn away by the devil, that we would be against one another. Lord, we love you today, and we thank you, God. Bless all of those people whose name were called, God, and those who were on the hearts of individuals. God, we ask that you would continue to bless people behind prison walls who are walking on the street that we see each day. Help us, God, to do what we can to help all people, not just some. Lord, protect us, even in times like these. These things we ask in the name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray for our food. God, we ask that you bless the hands who provided the food. Bless the homes that the food was prepared in. Lord, we ask that you would even bless those farmers who don't, farmers out in the field who don't have much, God, but who are trying to work and provide for us. God, we ask that you would continue to provide for them also. For they do a service for us to prepare the food for the grocery stores or the markets or whatever, God. Yes. Bless them and their families. Bless us, God, and let us be a blessing to others indeed. Bless the food. Let it be used for the nourishment of our bodies, for Christ's sake. Amen? Amen. Amen. If there's nothing further, if there's nothing further, please let us stand. Let us look to God. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord sing. You want to sing? <laughs> sing. <laughs> sing. 